let's start. Uh, welcome everyone. And today we have a talk by Valentina, and he will speak about uh, five point conformal blocks. Please start. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Um, much be on uh, recursion relations for uh, five point conformal blocks. And we'll also comment on uh, going beyond the five point case. Uh, and it is mainly based on um, uh, th this work with David Poland. And uh, I'll also uh, mention some ongoing work with David Poland and Peter Todich. So what is the motivation for studying conformal field theories? Conformal field theories are uh, remarkable quantum field theories that, that, that have long been known to describe the fascinating universal physics of scale invariant critical points. Such theories uh, are known to describe continuous phase transitions in fluids, magnets, and other materials, and at the same time, sit at the heart of our modern understanding of quantum field theory. They are, are known to um, enjoy an enhanced symmetry uh, due to uh, their invariance under a broad group of symmetries known as the conformal group. Remarkably, such theories provide a handle on the universal structure of the broad landscape of quantum field theories. And they also provide hints on, um, on particular quantum gravity models uh, th through the ADS-CFT correspondence and holography that also furnish concrete implementations of string theory models and shed light on black hole models. Again, through the ADS-CFT correspondence. Recently, there has been a, 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 um, a revival of the, the so-called conformal bootstrap program which is a program that seeks to systematically apply uh, conformal symmetry along with uh, crossing symmetry and uh, unitarity constraints or reflection positivity to map out and solve the space of allowed conformal field theories. So uh, by systematically applying the, these constraints, one seeks to carve out the parameter space that is allowed by this, these constraints. Uh, a famous example of this is uh, the, the success in, in the 3D Ising model, which uh, uh, on, on, on the side of the numerical bootstrap, uh, uh, these attempts have led to, a, to the world's most precise determination of uh, the 3D I, Ising model, critical exponents and OPE coefficients. This plot here shows the upper bound, for example, on a, a specific uh, scaling dimension um, of the epsilon operator in the Ising model as a function of uh, the scaling dimension of the sigma operator in, in, in 3D CFTs. And the Ising model is um, uh, notably represented by this kink on the plot. Um, but, but um, in the plot, everything below this blue curve is allowed by, the, um, by, by these conditions, these consistency conditions, and everything above the blue curve is disallowed. And, um, as, and as mentioned, the 3D is a model sits at, sits at this kink um, shown here. And um, at this point, uh, the critical exponents and OPE coefficients of this theory have been determined to remarkable precision. Owing to these attempts, both on the numerical and analytical sides, there has been tremendous progress, especially in recent years. And overall, the ultimate dream of this bootstrap program is to classify and solve the complete landscape of conformal field theories, which uh, represent effectively represent uh, special places in the landscape of quantum field theories and um, can 
uh, can, can provide hints uh, to, uh, to a better understanding of uh, more general quantum field theories as well, um, notably massive quantum field theories. So overall, the ultimate dream is to carve out this complete landscape of conformal field theories and predict their observables. So here's a brief outline of the talk. Um, I'll start by giving some motivation for studying um, five-point functions and uh, briefly discuss what is known uh, um, up, to, up until now. Uh, I will then mention to describe the form of the five-point functions. Um, and uh, further, I will move on to um, describing the um, weight shifting operator formalism, which is the formalism we use for this analysis. I will introduce the weight shifting operators and uh, crossing relations that they obey, and describe how to glue uh, three-point functions together in this formalism to form conformal blocks. Uh, I will then proceed to describe recursion relations um, within the context of this formalism. And uh, I'll start by uh, showing how one can recover the usual well-known recursion relation for four-point blocks in this formalism, and then I'll move on to um, describe our derivation of the five-point recursion relations. Um, I'll, I'll then give a summary of the main results and uh, discuss them. Uh, thereafter, I'll, I will um, describe how to promote the middle operator in the five-point function, which is uh, originally a scalar, to a spinning operator. Um, I'll show how to do this for the spin one case and briefly comment on um, the appropriate generalization to the spin two case. Uh, I will then briefly describe an application of this in the context and very brief discussion of possible constraints. Um, uh, lastly, I will comment on some ongoing work, uh, in, in particular on how one can use these methods to move beyond five-point blocks. In particular, I will consider the generalization to the six-point snowflake channel. And I will also mention some ongoing work that uh, is an attempt to implement the five-point conformal bootstrap uh, in order to study the 3D Ising model uh, with, with the help of, uh, of these uh, five point results. And then I'll conclude. So what is the motivation for studying higher point functions? So, so far, most results um, have been uh, extracted by considering the four point uh, conformal bootstrap. Uh, uh, there, there are uh, concrete expressions for, for these blocks or uh, recursion relations um, for um, four point blocks of scalars and arbitrary space time dimensions. Moreover, there's a rich um, assortment of techniques that treats four point blocks uh, in arbitrary Lorentz representations. Beyond the four-point case, there are there's a multitude of reasons to wish for a more precise understanding of five and higher point functions. One notable uh, reason is the multi-point bootstrap, which is an interesting idea that uh, may allow us to, uh, to 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 do a bootstrap, uh, but just considering endpoint functions of purely scalar external operators, rather than um, uh, considering, for example, a, a point bootstrap, um, the, the forced stress energy tensors. This, uh, uh, moreover, uh, uh, this gives us better access to interesting uh, physical regimes of um, conformal field theory, uh, like, like the light cone limit, uh, and, and, and the Reggie limit. And uh, it also gives us a novel probe into 
into the um, heavy, heavy, heavy three-point function in holographic conformal field theories um, by studying uh, mostly light five-point object, namely the light, light, heavy, light, light correlator. Um, in addition, uh, studying higher point functions may lead us to an improved understanding of, uh, of the implications of the uh, average null energy condition. So here's a summary of what is known so far. <clears throat> a few notable um, developments to date uh, include the following. Uh, the, the first five point scalar exchange conformal blocks uh, were, were computed um, in fairly recently by Rosenhaus. Um, thereafter, um, some holographic representations of higher point blocks um, for a general endpoint um, uh, functions in the cone channel were constructed by Parikh and, um, and Hobak. And um, uh, moreover, th th there has there have been some there has been some progress in uh, deriving dimensional reduction formula uh, for higher point scalar exchange blocks. <clears throat> uh, an alternative approach based on uh, the operator product expansion in the embedding space uh, has led to general representations of higher point scalar exchange blocks that, that, were, that was developed by Fortan, uh, Ma, and Skiba. Uh, um, however, if one considers the, the capturing the exchange of spinning operators in uh, uh, higher point functions, so far, there have been few results. One notable exception is um, a series expansion for, for general five-point blocks, uh, but only for identical scalar operators that was developed by Consalvas and collaborators. Uh, but but this, and th this approach uh, involves, uh, is limited to identical scalar operator, external operators, and uh, it, it also involves a, a summation over nine different parameters with the, the expansion coefficients determined by uh, the Casimir differential equation. And uh, the, the, hope, the hope here is to give a more, a more practical approach uh, generating these objects. Um, in, in addition, more recently, um, light cone blocks for, for five and six point functions have been obtained on the snowflake channel. And um, even more recently, uh, that there, has, there have been uh, derivations of the, the multipoint cone channel blocks in 3D and 4D um, uh, that, that, that were obtained through a connection to Gadan integrable models. In this work, uh, we, we seek to find a simple and practical approach to, to determining the five-point uh, conformal blocks um, in a five-point function of purely external operators, um, scalar operators. We hope to improve and extend uh, our understanding of five-point blocks by um, giving us a set of simple recursion relations that enables us to effortlessly generate these objects. Here we restrict attention to uh, scalar external operators and uh, seek to compute the conformal block for arbitrary symmetric traces tensor exchange in the 1, 2, and 4, 5 um, OPEs. Our uh, results here may be seen as a natural generalization of uh, the original recursion relations obtained by Dolan and Osborne for the four point case. Um, so, so let us um, briefly set the stage for the analysis. Uh, here we work in the index-free embedding formalism uh, of Costa et al. And, uh, and restrict attention to, uh, throughout this analysis, we restrict attention to parity even correlators only. And um, we choose to uh, label the, uh, our... Um, symmetric traces exchange primary operators 
by um, the following notation. Uh, uh, as, as the parameters delta and, and L, uh, the, the, the scaling dimension and spin of the, of, of the appropriate operator, respectively. Now, the form of the five point function of uh, general symmetric traceless primary operators is fixed by conformal invariance to be uh, as shown, where um, the exponents of them of, of, of the um, positions um, or xij is shown here um, are fixed by uh, scaling invariants uh, and, and are um, made are chosen to obey requirements to agree with scale invariants and here Tau denotes some of skeleton and the spin. Xij, as mentioned, um, carry powers that are fixed by homogeneity. And here, the, the, the f sub k is some function of the conformal invariant cross ratios. In the five point case, there are five such cross ratios for um, um, greater than three dimensions, <clears throat> space time dimensions. Um, uh, furthermore, uh, um, the polynomials Q here, uh, which depend on the positions and um, the auxiliary um, um, uh, uh, the auxiliary um, ZI, a uh, tensor ZI, uh, have weight uh, L sub I at each point X sub I and degree that doesn't agree with each inch auxiliary uh, z sub i. And uh, these q sub uh, qk must be uh, identically transverse. And uh, th they are constructed from, 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 from these basic building blocks in, in, in the usual so called box tensor form, um, box tensor basis. And uh, namely these v's and h's. Uh, they're um, some basic building blocks that uh, from which these cues are formed. Now, uh, th th this, this combination here, this, this sum over k, may be expanded in a basis of conformal blocks. And these objects um, are, are, are special functions that capture the exchange of specific primary operators in the operator product expansion. And they may be seen as the building blocks of uh, correlation functions in the CFT. Um, effectively, they um, encode the, the, the kinematical contribution of descendant operators and uh, express it in terms of the primary operators um, uh, in, in the CFT. And uh, here in this analysis, we choose to compute our blocks in, in the following double OPE channel, uh, one, two, four, five. So uh, let, let's consider the scalar five point function shown here. And um, uh, we, we may imagine inserting a projection, a projector um, uh, to the multiplet. So some symmetric traces operator labeled by scaling dimension delta and spin L uh, in, into the five point function here uh, in the one two OPE over here. And uh, similarly for the O prime operator uh, for, for the four five uh, OPE over here. And uh, each of these three point functions <clears throat> um, which is a spin scalar spin three point function can be expanded in some basis of three point structures. And uh, the, the, there are multiple tensor structures because this, this is a spin, spin uh, scalar uh, three point structure uh, function. Uh, and we label these, these multiple tensor structures by the index A. 
And each of these tensor structures in the combination um, uh, uh, comes with an independent OP coefficient. So uh, upon inserting these vectors inside the five-point function, O delta L and O prime delta prime L prime, we um, find that we can express our five-point function as a linear combination of, uh, of five-point uh, blocks <clears throat> um, uh, and weighted by their OPE coefficients. And here uh, W represents uh, the, the object um, um, th th that is the, the product of, of them, uh, of some external dimension independent dependent prefactor and um, G, the five point conformal block um, for arbitrary symmetric traces greater exchange. And this external dimension dependent prefactor encodes the coordinate dependence of the five point function, uh, where the powers of, um, of these exabytes are, are, of course, fixed by scalar invariance um, um, in accordance with homogeneity. In the five point case, yes. Just a, just a naive question. If you want to do this to do bootstrap, um, do you have some positivity constraint on the five point function? Uh, the same way that you have for four point functions? Because in the previous expansion, I mean, it's not clear that, I don't know, that, that it's positive. Like if you want to do numerical bootstrap. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I mean, uh, normally, you, normally you use the fact that you know you have a sum of positive terms. Do you have an analog here, or? Yes, 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 you do. You have an analog. Um, uh, you, 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 you make, you, you may um formulate an analogous uh, bootstrap equation, but in the five-point case. And um, I, again, uh, for, for example, um, oh, well. <clears throat> uh, e even in the case of, of um, some, um, uh, for example, in, in the case of some energy condition like, like the ANIC, uh, you could um, uh, represent some state uh, um, uh, of, the, uh, of the energy flux operator, for example, in, uh, as a five point function, uh, like as a scalar operator in them. Uh, the expectation of uh, the expectation value of, of some operator uh, of the flux operator in, in in a state created by um, by local uh, scalars, for example, and and um, that corresponds to a five point function. And, and also, you can study um, the Ising model, which is actually what, what we're currently interested in. You can also study the uh, the Ising model um, uh, uh, in in the in the context of the five point bootstrap. Uh, similar to uh, what you can do in, in the four-point bootstrap, so so it is it, it is analogous, um, and and uh, the crossing equations look very similar. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, in the five-point case, uh, we as opposed to a four-point case where we only have two. Um, in the five-point case. Uh, generically, we have five independent conformal cross ratios for d uh, space time dimensions uh, d greater than or equal to three, and uh, of course we can choose uh, various bases for for these crossing for, for these cross ratios, and uh, in addition, uh, multiple forms of this internal um, brief are consistent with homogeneity requirements exist. For example, um, uh, one convention for that for the for this external p factor or so called the so called leg factor uh, is this one um, uh, featured in the paper by Peru, and uh, um, uh, th this this p factor is coupled to to the following basis of cross ratios, and uh, in our analysis here, we choose to work in a convention independent way. Uh, as much as possible, uh, so so that um, uh, um, these results can be 
easily adapted to any choice of bases uh, as desired. Um, having set the stage, uh, let us now discuss how to compute our main object of interest, uh, the five point blocks. So, um, uh, notably, some, some uh, prominent methods for computing um, conformal blocks are as follows. One uh, um, uh, prominent method is, is the conformal integral approach, uh, first introduced by uh, Dolan Osborne and um, um, for, and uh, later expanded upon by uh, David Simmons Steffen. Um, in, in addition, one can uh, use the conformal Casimir equation uh, to re restrict the form uh, of the blocks and, and uh, potentially to solve for them. Um, for, for example, that, that is what Dolan and Osborne did in the four point case. Uh, they explicitly derived the um, conformal block for symmetric traces exchange in the context of the four point function. Um, uh, because of course, uh, the three point functions are uh, known to be uh, eigenstates of the conformal Casimir operator. And another, um, uh, more recently, uh, a, a more general approach has been formulated uh, um, that, 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 that generalizes the differential operator um, approach of um, um, Costa et al. Um, from 2011. Um, and uh, this is the so called shifting operator formalism, uh, first introduced by Curtey et al. Uh, here we, we, we choose to work in the weight shifting formalism, which we find useful because it, it um, empowers us to obtain a set of recursion relations for generating. Uh, five point blocks for arbitrary symmetric traces exchange. This formalism uh, introduces a large class of conformally covariant differential operators. And these operators are useful because they may be uh, uh, used to, to relate uh, correlation functions of operators in different representations of the conformal group. And um, a key advantage of this method is that it, uh, it uh, as opposed to the um, original um, differential operator formalism from Costa et al, it, uh, it allows us to uh, change the, the, exchange, the exchange representation. Uh, it, it not, not only, so, so, so that approach uh, allowed us to um, get more general blocks um, uh, by writing them in terms of seed blocks and left the seed blocks to be extracted using other methods. But uh, one, one um, advantage here is that it allows us to, to also determine the seed blocks themselves, as well as these more general blocks that can be um, encoded in terms of these seed blocks. And uh, moreover, a natural feature of the formalism is that it, um, allows uh, us, us to efficiently derive recursion relations. It's a feature that is essentially built into the formalism. So uh, these weight shifting operators are, um, are a, a, a set of operators that uh, correspond to tensor products of different finite dimensional representations. And each set of such operators is associated with some particular um, finite dimensional representation. And here this A is an index that uh, um, represents um, an index for W. And V refers to a weight vector of W. So uh, for example, this W can be the uh, fundamental vector representation. And um, the, the idea is that, that uh, these operators are in one uh, that, that, that are associated with some finite dimensional representation are in one to one correspondence with the irreducible components of of, of, the, of this tensor product decomposition uh, of this um, dual w and uh, the 
and this V, which is the representation under which the operator O transforms. And the action of such operators, uh, differential operators on O, is to shift the weights of the operator by the weights of V, the, 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 this weight vector, while introducing a free a index. So effectively, they uh, when when the operator acts on on uh, d acts on some operator O, it uh, the missing degrees of freedom are transferred to this free index A. And for for example, an action of, the, of such an operator can be to increase or decrease the spin or dimension of O. And uh, and uh, these operators are are um, the um, basically the, the eigenvectors of the Cartan subalgebra of, of this um, associated with this um, uh, with this W. We may construct uh, uh, the framework is completely general and uh, can, can be constructed in any uh, formalism. But here we we, um, we choose to work since we're working in embedding space formalism. Um, we are interested in in um, in using the form of these operators uh, uh, explicitly in this in this formalism, and uh, here we focus in particular on the case of uh, symmetric traces tensors of S O D, and for in particular for the vector of interest here, and we we can build the following basis of operators. The action of these operators is to map um, some symmetric traces representation labeled by delta L, the scaling and uh, dimension and spin respectively, uh, to, to, to the following values. So uh, the action of the minus, so there, there's a total of four operators here. The action of the minus zero operator is to take the original operator and map it to um, uh, an operator with, 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 a, with a scaling dimension decreased by one. The zero plus operator takes L, the spin, and shifts it up by one. The zero minus operator takes L and shifts it down by one. And the plus zero operator takes delta, the scaling dimension, and shifts it up by one. A crucial aspect of, uh, of this construction that, that turns out to be very useful is that these differential operators um, obey a type of crossing relation that comes in two varieties, uh, the two and three point types. The role of, of, the, of these crossing relations is to, is to express the action of, of particular weight shifting operators at, at a given point to the action of these uh, of other operators at uh, at another point. So um, we, we choose to symbolize them uh, as an original paper um, about the formalism. We choose to symbolize the weight shifting operator in the following way, where W denotes the finite dimensional representation, uh, which in this case is the vector representation. So, so it acts, the operator E acts on and um, outputs some operator O prime and, uh, and gives it an extra index A, which, which is transferred to, um, uh, well, which as I mentioned before, um, uh, effectively encodes the, the missing degrees of freedom for, for, from the action. For example, it takes delta to delta minus one or L to L plus one and the missing degrees of freedom are transferred to this A. Um, so uh, let me briefly introduce the two-point crossing relation. We choose to represent a conformally invariant two-point structure in the following way. And we um, consider acting with some differential weight shifting operator on this two-point function which gives us the following crossing relation. Uh, in particular, 
this corresponds to uh, taking some weight shifting operator and acting with it at point two of the two point function and expressing this um, action as the action of another operator at point one uh, with, with the O, with o um, of X1 and O of X2 appropriately shifted. So, so um, and here M denotes a shift opposite to M. For example, if uh, the original operator increased the dimension at point two, the, um, the on the right hand side would decrease the dimension at point one. Uh, so uh, the, the idea is that these um, uh, differential operators, uh, these weight shifting operators, can uh, uh, we can express their action in terms of uh, at some point in terms of the action of of, of the opposite uh, least shifted operator at another point, and um, uh, another variety of this. Crossing relation is the three point one, which um, uh, is effectively a, a change of basis equation uh, for for um, for, for three point structures, and um, here we represent a conformally invariant three point structure by the following vertex, uh, where A enumerates all the splits in, in, in the uh, Product decomposition of, of the associations of each of these three O sub i. And again, uh, when we consider acting on, on the three point structure with some weight shifting operator, we get a crossing relation. And this crossing relation corresponds to, for example, uh, the action of D uh, labeled by some M at point three. Uh, and we can express this action on the right hand side by. Uh, uh, a linear combination of operators acting at point one. And the coefficients of this expansion are, are uh, the so-called um, Raka coefficients or the 6J symbols. And um, effectively, uh, this constitutes a, a change of basis equation um, for, for the three-point structures between different bases of, of covariant uh, structures. And these bases are generated by, um, uh, by, by the action of, of some weight shifting operator at some point, uh, for example, one or three. And um, uh, here the sum uh, in, in this um, three point relation is finite and, and it runs over the operators in the, uh, in the transfer product composition here. And in this case, O1 um, with, with the finite dimensional representation volume. And uh, notably, this relation reduces to the two-point variety that was previously discussed if we take O2 to be the identity operator. And um, the power of this relation is that it allows us to move weight shifting operators from, from one uh, leg of the diagram, for example, from, from point three to another, um, point one, for example, on, um, in, this, in this case. And um, um, because this uh, the crossing relation is effectively um, a change of basis relation, it uh, constitutes the main computational tool in this formalism. Another important feature um, are um, the bubble coefficients and, and come from acting. So if we take the, the three point crossing relation shown here and imagine contracting both sides of this crossing relation um, by, uh, with dx1, we find uh, the following. Uh, so on the left-hand side, we, we have some um, scalar product of, of um, dx1 dot dx3. And on the right-hand side, we have um, a, a product of uh, operators that are contracted acting at the same point on the right-hand side. So, uh, and this composition corresponds to uh, the so-called bubble diagram. And it is in fact 
proportional to chronicle delta. So, so it is only non-zero if a one prime and a one double prime coincide. And this feature is interesting because it allows us to, and, and useful because it allows us to um, um, effectively extract um, various coefficients that we require. So um, let us let me now briefly mention how to glue uh, three point functions together to form conformal blocks in the context of this formalism. Uh, a standard way to encode uh, a conformal block is by expressing it in terms of a conformal integral of a product of three point functions. For example, uh, the usual scalar exchange block in a a four point function of um, external scalars has the following form shown here, where M um, denotes the appropriate projection onto some monodromy invariant subspace that allows us to um, get rid of the um, unphysical shadow blocks. And uh, in the context of the weight shifting formalism, the operation that glues the point correlators in this case, phi one, phi two, O, and the, the shadow O, phi three, phi four, is symbolized by the following operation, uh, where this bow tie operator denotes um, exactly the, um, uh, the, the this, um, it, it denotes the insertion of this projector onto um, the symmetric traces representation that we're interested in, um, which is shown here. And the, the usual conformal shadow integral. So for spinning operators, um, uh, these O, o delta rows are, are to be glued to some representation with which it has a non-vanishing two-point function. And um, so, 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 in, so in particular, some dual operator of, with which, for, for which um, it has a non-vanishing um, two-point correlator. So uh, in, in terms of this um, bow tie notation, uh, we can therefore denote a general four-point block in the following way. Uh, Valentina? Mm, I have yes. a, a question. How far are you in your talk? Because it looks like you're moving somewhat slowly. You still have lots of transparencies and we're already 44 minutes. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll speed up or right. skip something. Okay. Um, our, our general strategy here is to uh, act with specific combinations of different operators on a given block and then apply two and three point crossing relations as uh, needed. And uh, the, the ultimate goal is to express the original block in terms of uh, linear combinations of lower spin blocks with shifted uh, external and potentially shifted exchanged uh, operator dimensions. So, so um, in, in particular, the original block would be expressed in terms of lower spin blocks, which is uh, um, essentially a, a recursion relation. And uh, to implement this kind of technique, we require a mechanism for integrating more parts. So in particular, uh, if we, uh, th this is the, the following statement, if we act on some operator O um, that, that is, um, um, glued to some O prime um, dagger, uh, we, we can relate that to some combination of, um, of O to uh, that the different operator uh, on O prime dagger with the opposite shift. And, and uh, this is effectively um, the two point crossing relation mentioned earlier. And uh, the power of this, is, of this um, statement is that it allows us to move the weight shifting operators from one side of the bow tie to the other. Let me now describe the basic procedure for extracting work relations. Uh, I will start by considering the four point scalar case. The, the scalar blocks are defined in the following way. Uh, we now choose to act with, on this object with the following combination of operators. Um, and this is a, a special combination that, that is um, actually, that actually does not involve differential operators because this uh, minus zero operator is just X1 uh, A. So if we contract, um, uh, dx1 minus zero with dx4 minus zero, we find, uh, we simply find this, uh, this um, combination. And um, uh, since these operators uh, shift the dimension, the scaling dimension of the, um, of 
the operators at points one and four by one, down by one, this gives us a four-point function with delta one going to delta one minus one and delta four going to delta four minus one. And um, the shifts in these uh, um, uh, uh, give us a shifted external prefactor that we can absorb into um, so, some prefactor um, uh, that, de that depends on the conformal cross ratio u, so in particular u to the minus one half. Thereafter, we can apply the three point crossing relation together with the integration by parts rule. And in this three point crossing relation, we would sum over them um, the, the um, tensor product decomposition of the vector, uh, the fundamental representation uh, with, with the symmetric traceless operator. A representation of a symmetric trace or operator of interest. And that gives us the following combination a delta one, delta minus one. Uh, so, so the exchange dimension uh, shifted down by one, and L, L and uh, the, the, the spin shifted up by one, delta and the spin shifted down by one, and delta shifted up by one, and L. And, and the, the um, dots represent um, other representations that are irrelevant for purely scalar. Um, four point functions. And the result of doing this is a familiar recursion relation that is uh, due to Dolan and Osborne. And um, uh, in particular, this is 4.18 in the, in the 2011 paper uh, of Dolan and Osborne. We now uh, desire to generalize this analysis to the five point case. The basic idea, again, just like in the four point case, is to express the five point block in terms of lower spin blocks. and in this case, we act on the five-point function uh, shown here. Uh, we can express the five-point function in, in this bow tie notation in the following way. So, so we have um, a scalar scalar spin, spin L five-point uh, three-point structure, um, a spin spin a scalar three-point structure, and uh, again, a scalar scalar spin L. So um, we act on this object with the following weight shifting operator combination, um, d namely dx1 minus zero dot dx3 minus zero which just gives us a, an external prefactor x13, which can, we can absorb into a prefactor um, that, is, that depends on the conformal cross ratios. We now consider our object of interest and apply the three-point crossing relation um, to the leftmost three-point structure. So we'll consider the action of um, the operator at point one and expand it by using the three-point crossing relation uh, in, in terms of the, inside the tensor product decomposition, these include the exchange of delta minus one L, delta L plus one, delta L minus one, delta plus one comma L. And we can then extract the various 6G symbols labeled by A here uh, by then acting on both sides with, with some operator DXI with N bar, uh, where N bar has a shift opposite to N. And further, we would note that there's only one non-zero bubble coefficient on the right-hand side, and uh, um, hence all of the terms except for one vanish, and we're allowed to isolate, um, uh, we, we can then isolate um, the, the specific J symbol of interest um, that way. So for example, um, here, if, if we're interested in extracting um, this one, or we, we can act with, with the opposite, uh, with the, um, which operator with opposite shift dx i minus on the left and right hand sides and the and only main and we would then isolate a the next step would be to push each of the operators through the shadow integral and for this we can straightforward the invoke the integration of parts rule to move um, this dx i across the bow time for example uh, if, if we have dxi plus zero, which shifts the dimension up by one, we uh, act on um, O delta minus one comma L. We, we can uh, use the integration of parts rule to write it as some coefficient, um, some, some two-point coefficient, uh, um, and O delta minus one with dxi shifted now now in the label minus zero so so that the action of it also shifts delta down here at this point we arrive at the following expression so uh, we um we have succeeded in in um, expressing dx1 minus zero as follows so um 
the action of dx1 on this uh, object uh, has been expressed in terms of dxi acting on the middle three-point structure, where xi is an external point carried by, by um, the O delta L operator. We then apply the three-point relation again, and the purpose would be to move the action of this internal operator, uh, of this operator um, uh, from the internal point xi to the external point x3. And when we do that, um, the shifts uh, on, on this uh, third operator, external operator, take on the following values, delta, minus, delta 3 minus 1, 0, delta 3, 1, and delta 3 plus 1, 0. And at this stage, we recall that um, we were acting with a composition dx1 minus 0 dot dx3 minus 0, where um, uh, dx1 minus 0 is contracted with dx3 minus 0. So all the bubble coefficients on the right-hand side would then vanish um, here, they will all vanish except for one, namely this one, the one that has the opposite shift. So dxt minus zero dot dxt plus zero would be the only one that remains. And uh, here, of course, the label A enumerates uh, the constituent three point structures uh, inside this um, spin spin scalar three point structure, um, uh, three, three point function. So, um, and here we parameterize all the structures by the following index, Nij, where Nij runs from zero to the minimum of, of the two spins, L and L prime. Upon extracting all of the relevant J symbols and, and um, uh, combining everything, we ultimately arrive at the following relation. So, so, so we, have, we have expressed the original block in terms of minus one comma L, and shifted um, scaling dimensions delta one minus one delta three minus one delta l plus one delta l minus one and delta plus one comma l, and evident this is evidently a recursion relation of spin l with l prime held fixed. So in all of these terms, l, l prime has remained fixed, and um, we we can now uh, of course apply the analogous approach to the other spin by acting with the dx three minus zero dot dx five minus zero operator combination uh, to now shift the other spin in exactly the same way. But this, of course, is the mirror image of the above procedure by symmetry. Um, and we can simply get the corresponding relation by making the following replacements, um, namely exchanging delta with delta prime, L with L prime, and delta one two with minus delta four five. Um, for convenience, we adopt the following shorthand note, where delta zero, delta prime zero denote in the scaling dimension delta and delta primes. And then uh, upon shifting, uh, to, in order to place them, um, the relations on an equal footing, we shift delta three to delta three plus one and delta one to delta one plus one. And furthermore, shift L to L minus one and uh, delta five to delta five plus one and L prime to L prime minus one. Uh, and this gives us the following set of relations. So we have a, a, a recursion relation that, um, L while keeping L prime fixed, prime while keeping L fixed. These relations are defined in a convention independent way. And uh, here these F of U sub I and F prime of U sub I are convention dependent uh, uh, prefactors that represent, uh, that are dependent on the conformal cross ratios. For example, for the set of conventions in Parikh's paper, uh, F of U sub I is given by U1 to the minus one half and, and F prime is given by u2 to the minus one half. Um, and the various coefficients featured inside these relations are products of the various 6j symbols. We can, um, uh, we can see these relations as two independent results because one plus a block L and delta prime L prime exchange in terms of L, L prime, L minus one, L prime, L minus two, L prime, so only L shifts down. And the other does the same for L prime with L held fixed. Uh, one important remark is that all terms on the right-hand side of each of these relations have strictly lower um, spin, except for one, in particular, the S energy plus one and S prime energy plus one pieces here. So these have a larger three-point structure index. And uh, we note that they only vanish in the following uh, cases. Um, in particular, S and Nj plus one vanishes when Nij reaches its maximum value, uh, a particular maximum value, namely L prime. So it's only, um, uh, it only vanishes 
when L prime is less than, or, and, and, and uh, in principle, yeah, exactly. It only vanishes when L prime is less than L, and S prime similarly only vanishes when L is less than L prime. And um, uh, an, an important observation is, is that the case of L equals L prime and Nij um, equal to its maximum value, namely L minus one in, in, in the case where, um, uh, where, and where the maximum is, an, is L, L minus one, um, is missing here. And for this, we need an additional relation for this case. But for all the other cases, we can simply use these two relations uh, successively. So uh, hence, we may generate the, our five point blocks in the following way. So in the case that L prime is less than or equal to L, we start from the seed um, where Nij is equal to L prime, the maximum, and iterate the first relation, the one that shifts down L until L prime, uh, until this condition becomes violated, until L prime becomes greater than L. Uh, at that point, uh, the second rela relation uh, turns on. And there we again start from the seed where Nij is equal to L, uh, its maximum, and iterate the second relation or uh, that shifts L prime until this condition gets violated. Uh, and uh, if at some point we encounter the case where L prime is equal to L and Nij is equal to its maximum, L minus one in this case, we would need to use a special recursion relation that is obtained by combining with another, by combining these relations. In that case, these relations collapse to one relation, and we need a second relation to um, uh, to express the additional structure. And, and the second relation can be obtained by acting with another operator combination, namely at points one and five, dx one minus zero dot dx five minus zero, which um, shifts L and L prime simultaneously. And uh, hence, we can use these relations uh, in conjunction to recursively generate all five point conformal blocks for arbitrary symmetric traces exchange, starting from the seeds L um, and L prime equal to zero. So in summary, uh, here we have given an explicit prescription for um, uh, obtaining conformal blocks uh, for arbitrary symmetric traces exchange in five point functions of scalar external operators. Let us now consider a slight generalization of this procedure. Suppose we would like to promote the middle operator, um, which is originally a scalar, phi, to a spinning operator. Um, in particular, let us consider the case of spin one. Uh, so uh, in, in this simplest case where, where phi is a vector operator, uh, the, the idea is to um, cast uh, the um, symmetric traces exchange block in terms of seed blocks for the purely scalar five point function. So in particular, here we have the following. So we we'll start with, with our usual block, uh, which looks like this, uh, our usual five point function. And uh, the change that we want to make is we want to take the middle three point structure and take the O phi O prime to O V O prime, where, where this is some vector operator at X3. And here um, we have distinct classes of constituent three point structures. So, so this Q for, for the vector case, um, so, so the three point function for the vector case can be written as follows, where, where, where Q uh, sub i uh, enumerates the possible um, tensor structures. And, uh, and here, here we have three distinct classes, namely uh, this one, this one, and this one, where uh, for, for each case, uh, for example, uh, i equals one, the, the first class only exists for Nij in the range from zero to the minimum of L and L prime. I equals two exists for Nij in the range from the minimum from zero to the minimum of L and L prime minus one. And I three, I equals three exists for the range zero to the minimum of L minus one L prime. So, um, so, so what we need to do is express each of these distinct classes in terms of uh, some differential operators acting on our original known um, Five point blocks for symmetric traces exchange. So let us consider the following quantity. Uh, that this, um, uh, this quantity that is related to the conformal block for, for, um, for symmetric tra traces exchange in uh, with phi um, promoter to spinning operator. And uh, as mentioned here, I enumerates the three distinct classes, while Nij 
of course, parameterizes the different possible structures within each class. We begin by expressing each of these classes, as mentioned, in terms of uh, in terms of a differential basis. In particular, we can express it as follows: in terms of some combination of uh, all of our operators, we have four operators at our disposal. So the second operator that acts at x three, of course, has to be a zero plus operator because uh, it should it's, this operator should raise the spin of the operator at point three, and the zero plus operator does exactly that. It takes l to l plus one. And uh, here we have several options. We have minus zero plus zero, zero minus and zero plus for either um, this operator at internal point i or this operator at internal point j. So um, for example, if we choose x to be equal to xi at external point i, we can express uh, the action of um, dx1 minus zero dot, for example, dx2 zero plus, uh, so, so for example, this specific combination acting on this three-point structure can be expressed as some linear combination of uh, each of the three classes. So um, since there are only three um, distinct three-point classes at our disposal, we, we, we therefore need only three equations to uh, generate our um, uh, some set involving uh, uh, these three classes and then solve for, for the structures. So the idea is that we can reuse these equations multiple times to generate this set um, in particular we have n minus one n and plus one for each of the three classes so oh, sorry. and and how um, much time do you need? sorry how much time do you need um maybe 10 minutes okay that should be fine uh we then apply um we then proceed in the same way as before and apply the three-point crossing relation um just like in that um in, in the case of, uh, of the external scalars, uh, and uh, but but here we we invoke a special variety of this crossing relation, one that holds the spin fixed, as well as the integration of parts rule, in order to obtain a set of recursion relations for our object of interest. In particular, for example, uh, by using this this um, uh, special variety. Uh, uh, we can obtain uh, of, of the three-point relation um, in, in order to keep L um, from changing uh, because, uh, because all we need to do, all that we need to do here is that uh, is, is to express this object in terms of some differential basis uh, acting on our known objects, which are on, which are on the right-hand side. side. So, so for example, here on the right-hand side, we have some sum over um, different uh, operator combinations that we know acting on known objects and namely the, the these objects that are proportional to the uh, scalar symmetric traces exchange blocks and uh, and and of course we also have um, it also generates itself on the right hand side with a higher uh, uh, three point structure label which vanishes at its maximum value and uh, um, I will now briefly comment on the spin two case. Um, uh, the uh, procedure is, is very closely analogous to the spin one case. Um, uh, the main difference is that <clears throat> we um, we now take the vector uh, blocks uh, as the C blocks. As, so, so, so the blocks that feature phi three motor type vector operator as our C blocks and Otherwise, we recycle much of the spin one calculation here. And uh, another um, um, difference is that now we have six distinct classes as opposed to three, but the procedure is um, precisely analogous. I'll now very briefly discuss um, a short application of, uh, of, um, of these results. <clears throat> so, um, so, so um, one interesting um, uh, application that, that, that we're interested in um, considering is uh, um, to, to study the average null, null energy condition um, in the context of uh, five-point uh, objects. So, so, so for example, uh, as is well known, uh, all quantum field theories are known to, to respect a special positivity known as an average null energy condition that um, um, states that the energy flux operator where the integral is over a complete null line satisfies the following condition, namely that the that this energy flux 
is non-negative. Uh, for all, uh, so, the, so the expectation of this quantity is non-negative in all states. And uh, we, we can ask, uh, are we able to derive some novel constraints on OPE coefficients by considering the ANIC positivity condition in the context of five-point functions? And um, one possible um, um, application of our, our, our results is, um, is to maybe use the OPE um, to compute uh, the expectation value of, of this operator, the flux operator, in some bilocal state um, encoded here. For example, the um, phi phi uh, tensor phi phi, and then de demand positivity. So, um, and we note that uh, we expect that in the OPE limit, where x, x1 gets very close to x2 and x4 and x5 approach each other, um, we expect in this limit, uh, uh, that the expansion will be dominated by the stress tensor or low dimension scalar operators. And um, uh, the, the states, um, a, a natural set of states we may consider are smeared states of the following form, where um, uh, this F uh, is a smearing function that, that is chosen to have support such that the convergence of the phi phi OPE uh, is intact. And uh, for, for example, um, we can we can take it to uh, to, to, to be some, some to, to have this form to respond to, to approximate energy states. And um, uh, beyond this, we, we may um, so, so, so th this can give us some constraints on OPE coefficients um, for for such states. And um, beyond this, what we, we can consider. Um, more general mixed states that are created by linear combinations of operators, uh, as um, similar to what was considered in the in the in the paper by Meltzer, and uh, for for example, we can consider mixing with a particular state uh, that involves the stress tensor, and and uh, and look at the following mixed state that uh, that um, involves two scalars and a stress and a stress tensor, and um, upon evaluating the expectation value. Uh, we've find the following two by two matrix. Uh, so, so this operator in this phi phi by, by local state. And uh, uh, so, so, so uh, and, and for example, T um, and phi phi. Uh, so, so, so for example, so here we, um, uh, all of these are, would be known objects because we know the five point um, function and, uh, uh, and the rest are either four point functions, uh, yes. And the rest of four point functions that are also known. So, so um, uh, then we require, and the idea is that we require this matrix to be positive definite, which um, hopefully um, may lead to stronger constraints on uh, the uh, on, um, data, no P equations. <clears throat> I will now very briefly comment on some ongoing work um, that takes us beyond five point blocks. Uh, the idea is to apply similar methods to extract six point uh, conformal blocks in the snowflake channel uh, for scalar six point functions. And uh, these objects have the following, uh, have a phi phi scalar spin L, phi phi and O L, delta L. And, and then we have um, phi three, phi four, and O delta prime L prime, phi phi five, five six, and O delta double prime, O double prime, and, 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 and an internal, um, and a three-point structure that purely involves exchanged operators. The main difference between this and the five-point case is that the three-point structure, we now have a, a three-point structure of the type spin, spin, spin that involves only purely um, uh, exchanged operators. So uh, one consequence of this difference is that we now require uh, differential operators in the, in, in, um, our recursion relations. So uh, the upshot is this: is that we now have two types of relations. One relation uh, involves uh, a single spin varying, and uh, and this and such a relation necessarily involves differential operators. And the reason it involves differential operators is that we now have um, uh, multiple three-point structures, and uh, uh, many more than in the five-point case because we now have three structure labels and they all vary, and uh, and we also have 
uh, another Don, um, a Dolan Osborne type relation that has two spins varying and um, that can be cast without differential operators. So, so um, and, and here, as opposed to the five point case where we, where we only had one special case, now we have multiple special cases. And uh, so, so it's much more intricate, um, um, but, but, that, but it is still fairly straightforward to generalize these techniques to, uh, in the context of the weight shifting formalism to this more complicated case. And and uh, another uh, uh, line of, uh, of um, our, our ongoing work uh, is uh, to implement the bootstrap um, on the 3D critical Ising model by um, um, applying our results for the five point and uh, eventually six point um, conformal blocks. And for, for, for example, and the idea here is that, for example, uh, the sigma sigma epsilon sigma sigma um, five point function uh, it can be expanded in either in the one two four five OPE, uh, the one four two five OPE, or the one three four five OPE, and um, by by um, applying the bootstrap in, in, in these various channels, we, we can hope to um, constrain um, um, the OPE coefficients, well, the OPE and data in, in general, uh, the um, dimensions and scaling dimensions and OPE coefficients, and um, uh, the idea of the approach is to truncate this. Some, the CFT at some level n by including just the first n conformal blocks that that are leading, and uh, and then apply uh, some numerical bootstrap method to extract the corresponding CFT data, and uh, but, but but of course um, one one uh, limitation of such an approach is that it only works for a truncable CFT, and um, uh, but but that but that uh, turns out to be the only limitation. Um, so so, so um, also. The, the, the more blocks we can compute, uh, the, the uh, more precise our um, uh, our results would be. So, so and, and the hope of doing this would be, would be to uh, maybe obtain new uh, um, hitherto um, undetermined OPE coefficients, and uh, and potentially improve the determ determination of previous ones, previously known ones. So to conclude. I, I've um, presented a concrete and um, practical uh, method for determining uh, conformal blocks uh, for general um, symmetric traces exchange that appear in five point functions of external scalar operators uh, for general exchange dimensions. And uh, here I have uh, provided a simple set of recursion relations. Um, that, that uh, were derived using the wave shifting operator formalism. And these relations can be used to um, systematically reduce uh, the um, symmetric traces exchange blocks to uh, linear combinations of the known scalar exchange blocks uh, in, in, the five, in the cone channel, in the five-point function, uh, with shifted external and exchanged dimensions. Uh, further, I've, I've considered generalizing these techniques slightly to promote one, uh, namely the middle external operator, phi three, to, to have either spin one or two. And um, um, I've also discussed one possible application of these results in um, deriving new constraints, potentially, uh, from the average null energy condition within the context of five point functions. Uh, for example, one, one can study the um, expectation value of the energy flux operator in, in the phi phi uh, by local um, state, which is a five point function. So it's, for that for that calculation, we would need to consider the phi phi stress tensor phi phi um, five point function. Uh, further, we have considered generalizing these methods to the six point case, uh, in, in particular in the snowflake channel. Um, and um, I've also um, briefly mentioned current ongoing efforts to um, implement the, the five-point conformal bootstrap by, by using these results uh, for the five-point conformal blocks that, that follow from, from, um, from, from these recursion relations. And in the future, it may be interesting to generalize these methods to potentially to non-trivial exchange representations, which are, are notably um, very um, important, especially in the, in the cone channel um, for endpoint functions. Thank you.
<clears throat> and uh, I'm sorry I went over time. Uh, thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, so you considered only, uh, you were assuming dimensions are equal three or higher, right? That's right, yes. So what, what happens in two dimensions? I guess there, there you can say much more. Yes, uh, in, in two dimensions, uh, one, should be, one should be able to use similar techniques to find the global block, but then to implement the full Versoro algebra, one would need to um, use other techniques. So, so, so um, I, I suppose that we could um, check um, to see if um, we can gener regenerate the usual global block for the two point for the two D case, but um, not. But, but at present, um, these um, this method does not include the verse algebra. algebra. Okay, can you explain, like last slides, you mentioned that people try to do this bootstrap uh, with higher point blocks. How is it advantageous to the usual one? Like, is it technically oh. simpler? Or... Yes, yes. Well, uh, one of the advantages is that it packages the information about the um, uh, theory in a different way. So, so um, uh, and, and um, uh, which, which can give us some information about various regimes of the theory that are interesting. For example, the light cone limit or the Reggie limit. But um, also another advantage is that uh, in the four point case, we would need to consider a spinning um, four point function in order to get all the information about the theory. In particular, um, notably we would need to consider them as the four stress tensor four point function and all of the non-trivial exchange representations um, uh, for is that case. Or, but but or... in the five point, sorry. Well, is it yes. eventually simpler, like a four point well, formal block with one external spinning line compared yes, to yes. scalar five point block? Um, well, uh, so in the multi point case, one would need to consider, uh, one would never need to resort to um, a spinning oper external operators. So one could restrict attention to purely scalar ex um, external operators. But of course, one, one would still, so, so, so one, one would have a purely symmetric traces exchange. For for um for many cases, but eventually uh, the number of channels uh, would rise with the number of uh, points, and uh, non-trivial exchange representations would start to come in as well. Um, so so um, it, it and and of course the form of these functions is is more complicated than, than the four-point case. But the idea is that maybe one would need to one would need to include as many uh, non-trivial exchange representations and one, one also would need to um, consider external um, uh, spinning operators. And, and uh, like I said, another advantage is that we can read, it gives us another way to package the information on the theory. So by non-trivial you mean spinning or? Yeah, yes, by non-trivial I mean spinning, yes. But, but of course uh, here um, uh, one, um, one challenge is that the number of channels grows with the number of points. Yeah. And do you have uh, mixed symmetry fields? So uh, I would. Uh, you sorry, could you repeat that? Do you, do you encounter mixed symmetry fields? Like in general, do you, I would expect that. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, you mean, yes, exchanged, you mean exchanged. Um, yes. Uh, yes. Yes, of course you do. Yes. But um, they sort of uh, come in. Uh, well, for, for, for different channels. So for example, for the cone channel, they, uh, you, you would have uh, the symmetric traces exchange. Uh, for, for the five point case, you'd only have symmetric traces, traces exchange because of the <clears throat> form of the, um, sorry, yes. Uh, because of the form of the object, you, uh, because of the three point structure, we only have a um, symmetric traces uh, exchange possible here because this, this is a scalar scalar Oh, I see. I see. Um, three-point structure, um, and uh, similarly here, but in the cone. But if we add another um, uh, case, uh, another um, uh, three-point structure here to get a to get a six-point block, for example, uh, we would already have one 
spin uh, th that is not necessarily a symmetric traces. Uh, one operator that is not necessarily symmetric traces. It could be uh, non-trivial. Um, and, and also, um, but, but, but in the snowflake channel, for example, so, so it's, it's also channel dependent. So in the snowflake channel, um, uh, we only have symmetric traces exchange because all of these are scalar scalar spin L three point mm. structure. But, but in the cone channel, for example, at, at uh, six points already, uh, we um, have non-trivial um, representations that can be exchanged. But, but, but again, uh, well, one, one advantage that, that was um, recently made, uh, I mean, one advance that was recently made in, in this, um, uh, this multipoint uh, analysis uh, is that um, uh, uh, Feynman, Feynman diagram type rules were, were um, constructed to um, basically generate all, all uh, possible channels uh, for, for the sc pure scalar exchange case. So, so, so the idea is that if, if we're somehow able to um, express those, express these these uh, spinning, uh, these non-trivial um, exchange blocks in terms of some operators, for example, um, linear, linear combinations of operators acting on uh, on on um, on some seed uh, representations, and then we can iterate. Um, all, well, use these to iterate down to to these known um, uh, scalar exchange cases for, for cases for all channels. So, so, so uh, um, it it is conceivable that one can come up with a generalized uh, way to do to uh, treat these uh, all these channels and e even these non-trivial representations within the context of this formalism or 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 um, other formalisms. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, other question? Maybe you can say a bit more what's trunkable CFT? Yes. Uh, yes, well, well a, a trunkable CFT uh, uh, is, is one that um, is, well, uh, it, it's defined, <clears throat> it can be defined, defined precisely, um, but um, the idea is that um, we can consider just including the first n conformal blocks in the CFT uh, and, and approximate the contribution that we're interested in by these first n blocks. And um, th that, that, of course, uh, is valid, provided that this, this approximation is, um, is, is valid. So, and, and in particular, um, one defines that by um, um, uh, requiring that the that um, one can set up the bootstrap equations for for the for the particular case that we're interested in for the particular CFT, CFT and um, see that the first uh, that, that for m greater than or equal to n um, homogeneous equations uh, we we get um, um, a, a, a good solution. So so if if, if the system is soluble basically for for, for this case, then uh, we. Um, then, then the theory is trunkable at that level. For if, if these m homogeneous equations are trunk are um, can be solved uh, for m greater than or equal to n, then uh, the, the CFT is trunkable at level n. If not, if we get if we get some uh, if we don't get do not get a solution, then we've included too many blocks and we need to truncate more. Or um, so 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 yeah. So, so so the idea of this method is that it's it, it's really is limited by how trunkable the theory is. And let's say uh, the Ising model, is it trunkable or not? Yes, at, at some level it is. Um, but, but, uh, but, but of course, uh, the, the, this, um, the, this um, uh, approach also is, is more, um, uh, I mean, so we can always inc increase n um, and, and uh, that is that is determined by by how easy it is for us to compute these blocks. So if we're able to um, compute uh, a large number of blocks up to a pretty high level n systematically and uh, with with um, with high precision and um, uh, in a way that 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 is computationally um, um, practical, then uh, we can always truncate the CFT at, at at a higher level. 
by, inc by including more and more blocks. But, but of course, that, that is limited by, by how effective our, the, the computational methods are also. Mm -hmm. But there's some minimum L, but there's some minimum level N at which this procedure works, of course. Uh, so we can't truncate lower than that because, um, for example, um, that, that then we wouldn't get a solution. And another thing, uh, question, like what is the form of the answer that you get? Uh, so I, I guess, so you have the seed block, which is already some kind of hypergeometric series, right? And then That's you need correct. to solve a differential equation involving it, right? Uh, no, 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 you, you don't solve a differential equation. You, you use these, uh, in, in, this, in this approach, you use these recursion relations to uh, iterate down to the seed block that is a scalar exchange block. Ah, and it's all algebraic, right? So, oh, yeah, so. So, so you reuse these recursion relations multiple times until you reach the zeroth node, which is the scalar exchange case. So, so, so the final form of the result is some linear combination of these scalar blocks that 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 um, uh, that, that have shifted um, um, potentially shifted uh, external dimensions or um, exchange dimensions. So, so, so in particular. Um, um, shifted delta, or delta prime, or delta one, delta two, delta three, delta four, delta five. But uh, they're all purely scalar exchange blocks that are known, and there's there are some hypergeometric functions. Yeah, okay, but it's like it's not a problem since uh, like anyway you evaluate it using computer, right? Uh, like in different channels, because I don't yeah. understand how you can re-expand. Like you have one expansion, let's say in one variable, then you need to re-expand in another variable, right? If you have conformal blocks in different channels. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Other questions? Okay, um, there are no other questions. Thank you very, uh, very much for a nice talk. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, I went over time. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Uh, thank you everyone for coming and see you thank next you. time.